good evening so today's class we are going to be discussing lines and tubes something that you will see very commonly in the x-rays that you report and the only purpose is you shouldn't be dumbfounded that ye line kya hai and you know nothing about it so that's what we shall be discussing how uh, what is the correct positioning so there are two kinds of things one incidentally you pick up a line uh, but more commonly it'll be a case wherein uh, a tube has been inserted uh, if you do IR procedures, most likely that tube would have been inserted by you. Otherwise, a clinician would have inserted a tube and they get an X-ray done to confirm whether it's correctly placed or not. So, so that's what we need to uh, discuss. Uh, we'll just share my screen and uh, start very cute small topic in which I don't have to teach you much. I just have to ask you uh, questions. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do and, and uh, leave you with the pointers that uh, uh, you know what are the adequate points as to uh, how we measure the uh, actual position, the correct position and uh, what could be the possible complications. So basically three things for every device. What device it is, is the fundamental thing that you need to know and what is the function that I'm sure everybody knows. We've been through enough clinical medicine now to know the function. I'm not going to tell you function of NG tube and ET tube now, okay? So we need to know what every device is and what the function is. So this is what you need to remember and where they belong is what you need to know and uh, malpositioning and the complications is what we are going to uh, no, okay. The difference is my pooch ke bataungi bhi. Okay. So first I will ask, I would want to know what you know, and then obviously I will not say like up tum pad kya ho. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you here only, right? So that what is always the purpose. Okay. So when you see something like this, you know, that is how most of the ICU uh, uh x-rays will look like. So if I tell you what is this. Uh, you know, you will ask me, ma'am, what are you talking about? Which one? <laughs> so here, this is what we have to unravel. At the end of this talk, you should be confidently able to point out each and everything here, identify each and every device and say that this is what it is and whether it is correctly placed or not correctly placed. So life would be a lot simpler if x-rays came like this, no? If this x-ray was color-coded like this, it would have been so easy ki uh, kash aise color coding ke saath hao, don't come as black and white and then I will tell you everything that it is. So let's try and discuss this one and then we'll go to um, color coded one, right? Or, or let's do it the easy. Since we're starting, let's do it the easy way and then we will look at many such x-rays where there are multiple lines, okay? So what is orange or red? What is this? Easiest line? Yeah, so this is it. ET tube, right? So this is the endotracheal tube. We see it in the airway and it should be above the carina. How much above the carina? So it should be anywhere between 2 to 5 centimeters above the carina is what we will look at. And it is something when your neck flexes or neck extends, the ET tube will move. Okay, so this is what is a correctly placed ET tube looks like. What is the green tube that you are seeing? The green tube that you are seeing. In neonates, there are no cutoffs which have been given uh, separately. But yeah, this is what applies to everybody. For ET tube in neonates, I couldn't see any uh, separate cutoff. But this is mainly adult x-ray which I am talking about, not children, okay? Yeah, so this is an NG tube. And when we talk about NG tube, we would want at least 10 centimeter of the tube to be coiled inside the stomach so that it's not pulled out. So for an NG tube, I will repeat all this. Everything is written also, but keep following simultaneously what I'm saying. Here the word is 10 centimeter coiling I want in the stomach for it to be adequate. What is this yellow line now? Who will tell me what is the yellow line? This we, uh, you will not see very, very routinely. No, this is not a central line. How is this a central line? Kaha tak dal diya central line? Yellow, this one. No, this is what is a swan gans or a pulmonary arterial catheter. Okay, so this is what we are placing 
फ्रॉम द ब्रेक क्योंकि फैलिक इट इज गोइंग सो यहाँ तक होता तो सेंट्रल लाइन होता इज इंट इट सो दिस इज वेर इट इज गोइंग इन द राइट एट्रियम देन इट्स गोइंग इन टू राइट वेंट्रिकल गोइंग सुपीरियरली इन द राइट वेंट्रिकुलर आउटफ्लो ट्रैक्ट एंड देन इट्स गोइंग इन द पलमनरी आर्ट्री सो दिस विल बी पोजिशन एनी वेयर अराउंड टू सेंटीमीटर ऑफ द हाइलम विच इज एन एडिकुएट कट ऑफ इफ इट इम्पिंज टू मच इन टू द हाइलम देर इज अ रिस्क ऑफ पलमनरी आर्टीरियल इंजरी सो दिस इज एन एडिकुएटली placed pulmonary arterial catheter or a swan gans catheter okay then what is this one white line simplest of them all perhaps you can see that it is coming from the right side most likely it has been inserted along the right subclavian and then this is the central line which is going and pointing near the right atrium somewhere close to svc ra junction is a correct right central line okay and what do you think is this one there is another central line that we have placed in this patient yeah so so yeah this is probably igv my bad because look at subclavian subclavian is even below and as you can see the clavicle so this is the subclavian line right so yeah this this is jugular thoda sa upward wala is is a bit uh, um, laterally placed it would it would have been a bit more straight but that's the external catheter which can you know which is movable and flimsy so uh, technically when you insert it's a straight puncture but after a while when you uh, secure it on the neck it can appear like this so this is igv because you have a reference of subclavian here right so this is a right subclavian vein that you can see in this peach color and what is this subclavian puncture this is actually a chemo port perfect so this is what is a porta cath when you see this round round it's a porta cath and i'll show you what a porta cath is it is used to give chemotherapy to the patient it has a self sealing silicon membrane because of which you don't have to manipulate the line what happens uh, you must have seen a jugular vein right so when we keep manipulating a jugular vein there's a very high risk of infection associated with the central line isn't it so that is where chemo mo port works very well where there's no manual uh, handling it's a self sealing you directly puncture and you come out so that way the risk of infection decreases particularly in patients who are on chemotherapy no this is the not this is not the same as permacath i'll get to that okay what is a permacath it's a tunneled catheter okay yes in addition yeah this patient has definitely has associated findings of probably uh a cardiogenic pulmonary edema you can see some fissural thickening you can see a lot of fluid as well right so there is bilateral pleural effusion there's cardiomegaly as well so must be having uh some sort of cardiogenic pulmonary edema okay so these so many lines ka matlab hota hai usually it's a sick patient right so so this is what is about what we are about to unravel one line at a time so this is where you want to take a screenshot i've compiled all of the desired position of every line here for you so ng tube the tip has to be in the stomach and we want around 10 cm in the stomach and 10 cm coiling in the stomach ET tube five plus minus two centimeter from carina. So technically five centimeter from carina is good to go, but three centimeter and seven centimeters from carina is also okay because it changes from the uh, movement. Okay, can it reach the pylorus? Yes. it's okay if it reaches the pylorus basically it will have to coil so it reaches the pylorus and then again coils okay a tracheostomy tube doesn't move with flexion extension and we want it to be 3 cm from carina it is fixed central venous catheter or a pick line you know what is a pick line everybody it's a peripherally inserted central catheter right so that is when if you want a long standing line in pediatrics particularly in chemotherapy patients you will puncture the basilic vein more commonly and you insert a central line but that is peripherally inserted usko bolte hain pick line it has a much smaller diameter that's how you can identify first of all it will have a longer course and it will have a we do ultrasound we also do ultrasound guided most patient most people do pick line as as uh, interventional radiology which is ultrasound guided so we do it as both ultrasound plus fluoro guided okay so that is what is pick line okay so again the uh, tip will be in the same okay then swan gans catheter proximal right or left pulmonary artery 
a intercostal drainage tube or a pleural drainage tube very very important all of the holes you must always check must be in the pleural space right the position of the tip is antero superior more commonly because we only see frontal x-rays most of the time so superior for pneumothorax inferior for effusion but that is not mandatory uh, you know anywhere the direction is it will usually drain but what is most important sorry what is most important is that the holes shouldn't be in subcutaneous plane otherwise they can be associated subcutaneous emphysema shouldn't be in the lung and shouldn't be in the fissures okay so this is what we have to check with the drainage tube a temperature probe may be seen in very sick patients you know in the thoracic esophagus but you will not find this very commonly a pacemaker is something we'll discuss so multiple types of pacemakers are there if there is a single chamber pacemaker the lead is in the rv in a dual chamber pacemaker it is an ra plus rv and in a biventricular pacemaker you will see three leads which is rv plus ra plus lv did you understand to aise cumulatively add karna hai ki rv to ho gaya hi अगर दो है तो आर वी प्लस आर ए अगर तीन है तो आर वी प्लस आर ए प्लस एल वी ऐसे ही होगा ठीक है दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर इन सम पेशेंट वी डू पुट इट इन द कॉरोनरी साइनस एज वेल ओके सो दैट्स ऑल्सो अ पॉसिबिलिटी इट मे बी प्लेस्ड इंस्टेड ऑफ द राइट एट्रियम इट मे बी प्लेस्ड इन द कॉरोनरी साइनस ए आई सी डी इज अ इम्प्लांटेबल कार्डियक डिफिब्रिलेटर in which case it looks much like pacemaker there is a subcutaneous generator but we will see that the lead is different one lead is more proximal in the superior vena cava or the brachiocephalic and one is in the rv and the distal lead is slightly different looking intraaortic balloon pump is what we use in patients who have cardiogenic uh, shock whose cardiac output ejection fraction is less than 20% so the indication of placing an iabp is when the ejection fraction is supremely low in which case we have to see the balloon we only see one part of the balloon which is the metallic part which is in the ap window okay so we know the adequate position of all of these tubes so now let's look at each of the tubes the complications where they can be placed so that's what we have to do okay so as i said three w's you have to see what is the first w what is it second is where do they belong and third is whoops is there a complication right so these are the three w's we have to see in any tube and that's your job as a radiologist so look at the first tube here can somebody tell me what is the tube that you are seeing and whether it is adequately placed or not 